can, what can you see? I see dolphins and dolphins. Really? Wow. Wow, that's pretty exciting. They are the dreams. While some would be quick to call it childish imagination, there may well be some truth to Lenny's tales. In many ways, they're a reflection of the stories we share with him. The stories of our adventures. Are we being a little too presumptuous in thinking that our children will grow up to be sailors and love the ocean as much as we do? Children are keen observers and imitators, and Riley and I often wonder what our boys will find passions for as they grow up. I guess mostly, we just hope that they're happy. But it is fun to wonder. Since we've brought children into this world and moved them fairly directly from the hospital to our sailboat within the first couple of months of their lives, the boat and this lifestyle has been all they've ever known. I hope we can keep the boat an exciting place for our kids. And we think with a little time on land here and there, they will continue loving this unique lifestyle. And it will remain a home that they want to come back to time and time again. Spending some time living in a community on land will give them just enough time to realise how much fun we have and how free we are out here, using the wind to move our home. We're sailing to St Augustine, aren't we? Yes. This week, you'll be joining us for the last of our sail as we arrive in St Augustine. We'll stay here for a couple of days before gearing up for our next sail further down the coast of Florida. It's only a hop, skip and a jump to the Bahamas from here, which is our final destination. We've really been enjoying this journey south. It's beautiful out here guys, really. This is nuts. Elena's not seasick, flat water, beautiful clouds, sun setting over there in the east I believe that would be. And life is pretty peachy. Who have we got here? The mother of dolphins. <laughs> I'm Laura. I'm allergic to onions and prawns. I like sailing. I love cooking tacos. Okay. And taking long walks on the beach. <laughs> And who's this? David. Hey David, Ready? what are your favourite hobbies? Free diving. <laughs> how tall are you? I'm 6'1". I'm one. I didn't half think. how tall Three. I am. I'm 5'5 five, five and a half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else to add? I enjoy sailing as well. Okay. What about long walks on the beach? I would rather run on the beach. Okay, yeah me too. Yeah. Sun's going down which means that we're going to come into this port here at night time which is very much not recommended but because we've got help on board we're able to be much more circumspect and sedulous than we would have been able to if I was trying to manage everything on my own. So we've been able to ring ahead, get the low down on the entry into this channel here, it should be all fine. We should be able to sail up the channel and then get a mooring ball out the front here. We even saw dolphins today that had pink undersides. I'd never seen that. Pink bottoms. They were very pretty. I, I don't know what kind they are. I don't have the internet out here to search, which I love. I will figure that out when I get back to land. You're excited, aren't you? I'm very excited. It turns out that these dolphins with pink bellies, which we didn't manage to get any footage of, is a way that dolphins dump excess heat when they're active, especially during the summer months here in Florida. This is called vasodilation, and it permits more blood to flow within the peripheral arteries and diffuse heat into the cooler environment. Weird. <laughs> I'm hesitant to say as much as I think my seasickness has been cured with the hormonal change after having my second child, but I'm pretty sure it is. It's happened. <laughs> nah, it probably hasn't, but this is the first time I haven't felt seasick on a sail since before I got pregnant with Lenny, which is like four years ago now. I didn't even have to use the VR goggles, which are high tech, that I am going to use next time I get seasick, which I'm sure it will happen. But anyway, it's like a whole different world when you come out here and you don't feel seasick. You can cook and not feel seasick, go down below and not feel seasick. I'm actually happy, like, all the time. I've noticed that actually. Well, nearly, when Lenny's not being a little crap. <laughs> Whoa!
So we've slowed down a bit, the wind's died down. We're gonna get in about 10 p.m. There's a change of tide at about 10 p.m. or slack water about at about 10. It's kind of perfect. I'd rather be in there obviously about now before the sun sets. But um, yeah, we should be able to sail the last little bit of the way in and then pick up the mooring ball. Lenny's been a bit of a handful this trip, but this guy's been, I wonder what Elena thinks. I think he's been really easy and awesome. All the way in the inlet, there's some unmarked buoys. We've got three miles to go now, going at 6.2 knots, and then we really need to start paying attention. Lining lights up and just using all the information that we've got here and that we've heard and making sure that it all matches, making sure that the depths match and the lights all line up and all that sort of stuff. We should be fine, but I mean, you, you don't want to make a mistake on a, on a channel inlet. Are we gonna sail in? Yeah, we should definitely be sailing in and probably motoring too because we need to charge the batteries, unfortunately. I get nervous about now. Because you spoke to the guys on the phone, I didn't. Yeah, and they all said it's well and get it and it's it's a big channel so and the waves are pretty small too. Current is will be with us, should be fine. Just saw some breaking waves to our starboard, which really scared the shit out of me, to be honest. Yeah, it's pretty hairy. We really can't trust the map, and we've got to go by breaking waves to our left and right. All right, I gotta go. We gotta we gotta concentrate. Keep it on your starboard. It don't. We've had to radio ahead to this bridge and they've agreed to open up for us. So we're gonna sneak through. If we can find a mooring ball, we'll go to the mooring ball. If not, they've said, the marina that we contacted said that we can tie up to the fuel dock for the night. And then we can all go to sleep. Thank you, Thank you Bridge Keeper. Oh. Engine's off. I did do it. No, no we all did it. We were coming from the north down and it was really difficult to spot the different lights. And then when we lined up the channel markers, we were going in and we cut the corner, fair enough, but none of the charts said that that area was shallow. And as we were coming in, David was on the bow. I heard a breaking wave to my right and I was like, well, we better duck, duck south a little bit more before oh we God. head in. Doesn't mean that, I mean, we could have, it might've just been three meters deep there or two and a half meters deep. Maybe, yeah, maybe two meters. Yeah. Mm. So we probably wouldn't have run aground, but it wouldn't have been pleasant. <laughs> St. Augustine. We'd been here before, not a bad looking place at all. We certainly enjoyed the 17th century Spanish stone fortress overlooking the inlet. Oh, the horrible night's sleep for mum. Thank you. Lucky you're so cute. Rise and shine, cuties. Time to wake up. It's, it was cold. Mm, it's pretty cold this morning. idea was it to film hey now i'm all wet and you're wet too <sighs> so overnight on the fuel docks when we woke up in this in the morning they weren't forcefully pushing us off so david and i stole a little bit of power used their water to clean the boat so we've had a massive win there the it was a legend so can we use some water and he's like yeah and he goes so you plugged into power as well i was like yeah he's like okay <laughs> but we'll say so we'll move from here to a mooring ball um, and that's where we'll stay for a couple of days and look at the next forecast to head further south before we jump over the Gulf Stream. So you've kind of, you got to wait for a, a northerly wind so that you can balance out your crossing with the Gulf Stream pushing you a long way north. Bye, Lenny. Bye. Thanks. Laura was leaving us. Again. Thanks so much again for your help, Laura. This season of sailing, we'll be having David on board full time and different ladies rotating out. Our next crew is Sarah, who was due to arrive later today, after we moved the boat onto the mooring ball. How's it going? Great, how are you guys? How's the baby? Very good, very good. <laughs> I can't believe you guys are here. Thanks for inviting you to feel welcome. We've been a patron of you guys since the mono days. Are you really? Yep. Thank you. I've been following you guys for years. I'm going to call my wife, she won't believe me. <laughs> 
Having met so many of our patrons out in the real world now has been awesome. Meeting our patrons and our subscribers, you guys, has given us a good idea of who you all are and we're grateful to have built such a kind, adventurous community around the love of sailing. If you'd like to help us keep making videos to see them get better and for extra live streams and unseen footage, you might like to join up to our Patreon. I'll put the link in the description below. Cheers, guys. Hot job. <laughs> Think cool. Today is Spanish day, apparently. All right, go reverse, mate. Reverse, reverse, reverse. Uh, there's been a little blockage, which has been causing a restriction in the water float. And David came out grinning from ear to ear, grinning like a Cheshire cat, bearing that little thing, causing us so many problems because we we're trying to figure out what it is and wasn't the impeller, wasn't like anything related to the, to the engine itself. So uh, I finally took the valve off and tried to figure out if it was anything related to that, which is really rare that it can happen. But that little thing was blocking the water. I replaced the elbow bends in yeah. Antigua. We've replaced the um, impeller like three or four times. I hunted down all through the system and then you found it right in there. It's a yeah. shell this whole time. That's it. Thank you. I'm so happy right now. We should now. keep that. We should put it on a necklace on that. We're just going to put the laundry on because we have a lot of it and we need to wash Laura's sheets because Sarah is arriving today. We're really excited to meet her. We've spoken to her on the phone. She seems really lovely. Bela means sail in Spanish. <laughs> She's my sailing dog. You too, mate. Well, thanks for following. Yeah. <laughs> we got to come back in half an hour to move that over there. It's the second time he's been walking one of these and hit a stationary object and just nose planted into here. We are walking back to the boat at like a nanosecond a minute. <laughs> you gave two units of time then. What an interesting concept. You definitely rock bands better than me. <laughs> so this is Sarah, everyone. I just had to officially be part of the crew, so I uh, got a new hairstyle. I ordered them on Amazon, so they're pretty cool if anyone wants that them. Actually bang. <laughs> yeah, they look better with your hair up, but... Well, and the gonna, option to remove them, I love that. Yeah, you can just... Unclip. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Thank you so much. Ready? Steady. I've always thought that the Mediterranean would be the perfect place to sail and to teach kids history through visiting sites kind of similar to this one. But I wanted to know what people thought, what would be the best age and where would be the best places to go for a trip through the Mediterranean if we wanted to sail but also learn about history. <laughs> What's happening Lenny? What's happening? So what should we do? Go faster? Okay. Okay, let's go, let's get away from the crocodile. Yeah. Can you give that one to David? No. Yes, you can. He wants to keep going. <laughs> Sarah, what's this? This is a burrito bowl with just a bunch of stuff that we had in the kitchen. Oh, God, that looks amazing. <laughs> it's gonna be delicious. Do you really want another apple, mate? Yeah, I really want another apple. Say ta, Dad. Lenny. Hello, 
Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> you getting ready for bed, you kids? Look how cute these little shorts are. So I've just woken up and cleared the decks, put all the washing away, and just made sure that nothing get, can get rained on. This is the northerly blow that myself and David and Elena and Sarah have been talking about that we're gonna use to catch south. There's a cold front coming down. I know a lot about these because I experienced so many on the North Atlantic crossing. This is unbelievably intense. He said she saw lightning hit the water and sparks fly up from the water got the cold air from the north it's coming down and pushing it, it collides with the warm air as it heads further and further south and you get bad weather and the wind shifts direction really quickly it can be really violent or it can just be kind of like this which is not so violent but also i'm glad that we're not out there sailing tonight really interesting i love this Manny, what are you making? Water. You're making water? Yeah. Okay. Looks like you're making a cake to me. A cake? I'm making a cake? Yeah, you're making a cake. Water cake. A water cake? Yeah, a water cake. Okay. We're leaving tomorrow Thanks, this morning, Tom. Captain? This is bizarre because cold front came down last night as we expected, but now we're getting weather right here, which is very different to all six of the weather models that we've got. And how is it different? There might be 10 knots from here when what? they're supposed to be 18 from here and gusting to 24. So I wasn't gonna leave today because the weather just after the cold front is still unstable, gusting, violent to a certain extent. It would be more settled, more calm, more predictable tomorrow. The weather inshore, there's gonna be disturbances and it's gonna be less predictable than it would be offshore. It's gonna be windier, no doubt, and maybe even swing around a bit further north than from directly west. Taking all of that into account, it's very, very strange. Yeah, usually a cold front like this this is what we like the most because it's really stable um, other than having a warm wind from south with that little storm and patches of no wind everywhere and yeah it's just really strong uh, really weird right now so we decided not to leave today the boys went into town for lunch and we're gonna do some meal prepping for the big passage ahead starting with zucchini muffins and then a big pasta salad a big quinoa salad whatever else or maybe some egg cups some boiled eggs Oi! <laughs> Get out of there! <laughs> Get out of the chocolate no. chip! Yes! <laughs> no, no, no! We gotta say goodbye to the chocolate chips now. We gotta mix it up. Okay. They're easy to clean too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lenny, hey. look what Sarah's doing. Oh. That's gonna be good. Oh, is that yum? Yeah. That's it. Jump up. Jump out the way because Dad's got a. No, Dad's got to drive, Lenny, all right? You happy or what? No. I've just had a big day of work and now we have to go find a place to upload footage. All right, so what's happened, Riley? Well, we were going to go and offer a hotel <laughs> concierge 100 bucks to let us use a conference room. Gino has kindly offered to let us use his portable hotspot. We were trying to save money by not getting a SIM card in the US and it's been a disaster. Oh, I, I hope it works. We'll give it a go. Yeah. And you're a patron. I am a patron and, and I've been a subscriber since way back when you guys had the mono. Yeah. Yeah, we followed you guys before before them and yeah. Yeah, I mean kind of why I bought this girl. Amazing. You inspired us to, to get out there and do it instead of just wasting time. You Amazing. know, we pulled the trigger a lot earlier than what we thought we would. I came over here the other day. Gino told me the story about it, how he got caught in a hurricane. Oh, that's not. Yes, run from those. <laughs> those are not pretty. Yeah, you know? exactly. But, you know, and that shows just like you've seen before. Forecasts are so wrong. Yeah. I'm yeah. watching like four different models, you know. Yeah. It's all going to hit Charleston. No, it hit South Carolina. Yeah. We ran right to the storm. If we would have stayed put, it would have, it wouldn't have made landfall near us. I can't uh, imagine that must have been terrifying. It was. Well, I, I well. Hope, <laughs> hope, make that work. Yeah. I hope Lenny. that works for you. Yeah, let you know how it goes, I guess. Uh, 
like you'll see our thing. Sarah asked me to go through the entire Rapido project. No, she didn't. From start to finish, my thoughts and philosophies on sailing, the rig, the electric engine. He engines, does this to every whole... new person on board. <laughs> I don't mind. I'm interested. What are you doing, Lenny? Are you catching a fish with your kite? Yeah, a fish in the Quick, pull it in. Pull, pull in the cart fish. No. What'd you catch? I catch fish fish in the cart. It's a shark. A shark? Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. We'd love to hear from you in the comment section. Peace and love. <laughs>